Awesome. So hi there, everyone. My name is Amy, and I am with the Growth Zone AMS marketing team. And we are lucky and thrilled to have Frank Kinney, author, speaker, and consultant with us today. And before we get started, I'm going to go over just a few housekeeping items. You can find our Growth Zone resources online um, across social media, everywhere from Facebook to Twitter to Pinterest to LinkedIn. And we try to leverage those platforms to share resources that are helpful to membership professionals. So whether it's a blog article, um, posts from industry professionals or influencers, research papers, if it is helpful to membership professionals, we do our very best to put it out there. So um, moving on, talking about our demos, we have, uh, you can find, sorry, I just got distracted for a minute. Sorry about that. So if you're not familiar with Growth Zone, I encourage you to check us out online at growthzone.com. We have a button there on the front page where you can sign up for a low pressure, no pressure group demo. Yeah, no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Oh, I, did we just lose Amy? How would I come back, Amy? Goodness, I do not know if Amy is gone. I don't know if I'm really even broadcasting still. I think I am still. Here she comes. You're back. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. The whole screen just went black. And so I wasn't sure what was going on and um, I'm still not. So Frank, are you back with us? Can you hear me, Amy? I can hear you and see you. So that's excellent news and I can still okay. see your screen. So okay. um, sorry, everybody, we're still here. So again, feel free to go to growzone.com and sign up for a no pressure group demo. Um, the webinar is being recorded. So no matter if people attend or not, they will receive the recording via the email address that they use to register. You should expect that in your inbox, hopefully here in the next 24 hours is usually when it hits. Uh, it will include a link to the slide deck and a link to the full recording. If during the presentation you have questions, just submit them in the Q&A frame, uh, Q&A panel. We'll try to have a Q&A session towards the end. Um, hopefully we'll still have time for that after I disappeared from the webinar. Um, so hopefully we'll have time for that and we'll get to as many as we can. The chat panel, which is separate from the Q&A section is great for discussions between attendees. We've seen a lot of cool things go back and forth uh, with people sharing ideas and information. And additionally, Zoom offers the option to send private messages to uh, the host. So if you have something specific you'd like to share with Frank or with me during the presentation that you don't want anybody else to hear or see work-related, please <laughs> um, feel free to utilize, utilize that feature. And so why don't we just take a second here before we move on to give the chat panel a try. So just send a shout out to the group um, where you are logging in from. As usual, all over the place. I just keep going and going. So welcome everyone. We're glad that you can, oh, it's just going crazy. So that's awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna just about hand it over here. I wanna tell you a little bit about Frank. Um, he is an internationally recognized author, speaker and consultant. He is the founder of the Chamber Focus Show and Chamber Professionals Community Group on Facebook. And if you're not familiar with that group, it's definitely worth checking out and I'm sure he'll talk to you about it. Um, over the past 10 years, he has helped hundreds, 
probably thousands of chambers reach their goals with training and planning, board retreats, social media, marketing, all those type of things. We here have worked with Frank for years, probably longer than 10 years, I would guess. Um, and he has always proven to be one of our most popular presenters. And we are honored to have him here with us again today. And so I am going to hand it over to Frank Kinney. Thank you so much, Amy. And Amy, if anything glitches, come back on the screen because I really, all I have is my PowerPoint. So I will, I will. All right, well, welcome everybody. Thank you so much, uh, Chamber Master Grove Zone for uh, hosting this today. Uh, let's talk uh, automated member recruitment and retention. Uh, before we totally jump into this, let me do a quick little self-introduction. Uh, I used to be, I still am, but it's a different business, a small business owner, and I was very involved and active in our local Chamber of Commerce. Uh, so that's my background. I uh, was a member and then on committees and then on the board, then elected chairman of the board. And right then our uh, CEO of the Chamber quit. Uh, but I also decided to leave our family business after 12 years. And the board asked me if I wouldn't uh, interim the chamber CEO job. And I just loved it because I used to you know, be the small business owner. I used to be the member and I could now help the members. And instead of being three months, it was four years because I just loved it. It was like I found my sweet spot. Uh, and right towards the end of that, this little thing called social media came along. This was 2008. And uh, the board was so against it. I brought this idea to them and I said, you know, we should try this blogging and this thing called Facebook and none of them had ever heard of any of it. Uh, and so they were adamantly against it. They, they were just, uh, it was like, you'll just waste your time and it's a fad and all these negative type of things. And I, I really thought the board was gonna shoot it down. But luckily my chairman of the board, who was a risk taker, who was an innovator said, you know what, I'll handle the board. You learn how to do this. And so we jumped into it with both feet and within 18 months, we doubled the size of that 45-year-old chamber. And this was 2008 is that recession, the, the recession of 2008. All the chambers around us were declining. Most of the chambers around the country were struggling, but we had doubled the membership. And so I started getting offers. To, Would you come speak at our state conference? Would you come train and you know various things? And it just opened up doors for me to about 10 years ago to teach this stuff full time. And that, so that's what I've done. It's um, full time on the road for the last 10 years, helping chambers and associations with social media, digital marketing, marketing automation, technology. Uh, so I've worked all over the United States and Canada, I've worked over in Africa. I've written three books on the topic. I'm a faculty of the US Chamber Institute program. Anybody part of the IOM program, you can put that in the chat area, that would be fun. Uh, and I have my MBA. So. Oh, and something people find interesting about Norma and I, and that's Norma up, up in the upper left there with our grandson Hudson, is Norma and I travel full time in our RV. We've been on the road for six and a half years, almost seven years. And we just go chamber to chamber, association to association, and we just travel full time, sold the house, and we're just on the road. And we make our living by doing digital marketing. And so marketing automation, you can't do digital marketing without doing marketing automation. So this, this pays our bills. So I, I kind of, I've learned uh, the hard way through trial and error over the last 10 years, how to make all this stuff work. Uh, so, oh, and there's Cooper and Trixie on the bottom. We couldn't travel uh, like we did without our co-pilots. All right, so let's jump into this. Uh, why you should be using email marketing automation. There's a lot of marketing automations. The, the most effective is email marketing automation. The most, uh, the critical one is the email marketing automation. So that's what we're gonna talk about here today. Uh, and it leads to a lot of things, the most important being member recruitment and retention. So new members and retaining those members. And, uh, uh, what you get when you start doing marketing automation, email marketing automation, not only do you get new members and, and higher retention, but it just makes you an all around better marketer. Because when, when you start doing this email marketing automation, you got to think much more responsibly to the opportunities to uh, sell a new membership and uh, recruit somebody and retain them. Uh, I'm, you're all so busy. I, I'm sure you can relate to where you get lots of leads that kind of come in uh, to you that so-and-so should join the chamber, but you're so busy that a lot of those kind of fall through the cracks or maybe you make one phone call or you send out one email, but what about all the follow-up phone calls, the follow-up emails when, when these leads are kind of flooding into you? 
it's tough. You know, you guys are so busy. Well, if you're using email marketing automation, let me tell you, the, the system immediately responds, you know, because time is of the essence. If somebody is thinking about joining your chamber or your association, you can't wait two or three weeks to get back to them or even two or three days. You've got to respond now. And that's what the system does. But it's just not that first email, that first response. It's also down the road, multiple touches. You can't just count on one email to take a stranger and convert them into a member. Uh, it doesn't work that way. It takes a series. It takes uh, a delayed response. Uh, it's got to be at the right time. So it makes you much more responsive. It also saves you time. You know, I, I, getting it set up, I, I have to admit, getting it set up is going to take a lot of brain power. It's not just a couple hours in one afternoon. It, it's, it's a bit of a slog to get all of this running. Just like anything you learn the first time, you've never done it or you, you haven't um, kind of optimized what you're doing, it's going to take some work to get set up. So don't fool yourself there. That you won't, up, you won't set this up in an afternoon. But once you do get it set up and you turn it on, it works for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. It just works. It's almost like adding an extra employee that's constantly out there taking your leads and trying to convert your leads and onboarding members and things of that nature. So yeah, be ready for the setup. It's gonna be frustrating. You're gonna to have to learn some new skills. But once you get it set up, it gives you back your time. So it's hugely valuable uh, and it makes you more strategic. With marketing automation, you got to think in terms of salesmanship in print because you don't have a real human being face to face with these leads, these prospects, these new members. What you have is words, text, maybe video. And you got to think about how do I convey what I would have conveyed in a one hour sit down face to face meeting how can I be that persuasive through just text, through emails? And you can be, I mean, this direct response marketing, direct response copywriting, which is what email marketing automation is built around. It's been around for a hundred years, getting people to take action now based upon never meeting them. It just happens automatically through the system. It, it can be done. It is being done by many, many, many companies and chambers and associations uh, but you can't just throw it out there and wish for the best. You really have to become very strategic. Uh, remember that phrase, salesmanship in print. Uh, another thing it does is it makes you much more proactive about recruitment and retention. Uh, there's a lot of organizations that kind of, the brand is so good of the, of the chamber or the association, your, your positioning is so good, you've been around for so long that people just come in and they join. They just walk in and say, I want to join. And that's all well and good, and you're still going to get those. But what about all those other people that should be members that aren't members because they've never been asked, or they were asked in the wrong way, or they were asked at the wrong time? You know, so there's a there's a big um, big issue around. You know, when you start doing email marketing automation, you're going to be thinking in terms of how can we proactively find those people and convert them into members and uh, long-term members. So a lot of reasons to be doing email marketing automation. And if you haven't really researched this topic at all or really given any thought about it, you, you can break it down to it's basically a, it's a system to email members and prospects that at specific times under specific circumstances. So this is not just uh, bro broadcast emails to everybody kind of stuff. That's not this at all. This is very specific emails uh, sent at very specific times. Uh, for, and for example, uh, an onboarding series. When you get a new member, you've got to onboard them, right? And old school would be you would uh, show up with a packet, uh, envelope, uh, folder, give it to them with you know, all the different things that your organization does for them. And they would look at it and they would go, oh, this is very nice. And they'd put it on a, on a shelf to get back to later and they wouldn't get back to it most of the time. And uh, so that, that's old school onboarding. Uh, if you don't onboard people, that's a real problem because um, well, I can tell you what they, uh, the, the technology companies have discovered about onboarding people. If, if somebody buys a piece of software and they don't use it within a couple months, the chances of them staying a member or to keep paying that monthly software fee goes down dramatically. 
And it's the same in the chamber world and the association world. That first year member retention wise, if they're not onboarded right, they only maybe 50% of them stay. And that is a tragedy because you spend all this time and money and marketing and everything to get a new member and then they just bounce out because they weren't onboarded because they never used the service. Uh, so if you're not onboarding your members using email marketing automation, that's the low hanging fruit. That's where to start. Uh, so I'm going to cover that today. Uh, but there's other things that you, you should be doing. Another one is what about when a, just a lead comes in, a prospect, somebody that's not a member, but they should be a member comes in. Are they getting a welcome email series? You know, something that introduces them to the chamber because a lot of people have no idea what the chamber or your association does. They, they're clueless and you know this, uh, but also you got to convert that person into a member and uh, you, you're going to do it without a phone call, without a face-to-face. -face. It's just going to happen through salesmanship and print, through the copy. So, and there's another one is the retention series. You need to retain your members. The most important number in a membership business is retention. If you've got a hole in your bucket and people are coming in, but they're not sticking around, well, you're never going to have a successful organization as it could be. You need a high retention rate because that is, you know, if you get a member that stays year after year after year paying their dues and non-dues revenue, if you think in the terms of the lifetime value of a member, it's not that $400 membership. It's 4,000 over 10 years or more, depending on how long they stay. So think in terms of lifetime value of a member, it's not that first dues payment. It's what, what would they invest in your organization over years? And it becomes a very big number. So you have to be onboarding people and retaining them. And you have to be attracting new people. All right, so let's jump a little more deeply into this. You know, the question is, who do I send these emails to? And you know, it's pretty straightforward, but when you get a new member, they get the onboarding series and they get the retention series. If you come across a prospect or a lead, and I'm gonna show you here how to, how to do this, well, those people uh, and get, a, uh, get a series, get a marketing email series. And so those are the two big pots that we're gonna talk about here today. Uh, some other things that I just wanna cover here because they might be on your mind is, you know, what program are you currently using? Are you using Constant Contact? Are you using MailChimp? Are you using the Growth Zone uh, email marketing module? All of these will do this. Matter of fact, almost no matter what email service you're using, it comes with built-in email marketing automation. You just have to set it up. And I, and I gotta tell you, it used to be a bear to set these things up. Very complicated and really hard to understand and wrap your mind around. And it's gotten so much easier. The user experience for setting up your email art marketing automation systems is just, it's finally come around to where non-specialists for you know basically any organization should have these things set up. Uh, and now they all do it different though. I got to tell you, every system has their own way of doing this. So I'm not getting into the technology today of your individual system. You'll have to go with their customer service uh, if, you, you know, if you get stumped, but they all do that. Uh, I, again, it's all about a series of emails. And it's again, the copy or the salesmanship and print, the, the all email marketing automation is about setting up these series of emails. Uh, and then something you gotta do with these series of emails, not only do you have to think about your unique circumstances and what messages you wanna send because every organization is different. Don't look, don't look for a template where you can just copy what some other chamber or some other association is saying. Every organization does theirs a little bit differently because you're trying to be real, you're trying to be human, they gotta like you. And so you, it's gotta be customized to you know, your brand, your community, your industry. Uh, and then you gotta set up, what's the, gonna be the timing of these? Uh, so, so there's a lot of decisions to be made. I'm gonna give you some really good tips today, but I guarantee you that you know, yours is gonna look a little bit different. Uh, and you're also gonna have to think in terms of your target market. You wanna be reaching the right people, so the right niches, uh, in the chamber world, it would be people like uh, people that are interested in networking and becoming known in the community. That'd be a niche. So that would they'd get one series. But somebody else might be interested in economic development. So they would be getting a different series. So you're going to have to start thinking in terms of who are our large segments? Who are our prospects? 
uh, that we're going to reach and put into these series. The key is the right people, so the right target market, with the right message, the right copy, the right salesmanship and print at the right time, because timing is everything. And uh, I'm going to go through these series today as we go. And uh, I'll answer questions at the end. Amy is uh, collecting the questions. So uh, if you come across something where I haven't answered it, uh, make sure that Amy gets uh, your, your Q&A there and we'll cover it at the end. All right, let's jump into the first sequence. This is the onboarding sequence. Somebody has joined your chamber or your association, so they've been added to an email list. Well, that's a trigger. That's when these things kick in. When somebody gets added to a list, the marketing automation kicks in. So that's the trigger. On day zero, which in, in this, this strategy and, and using this tool, day zero is considered immediately. Okay, so don't think in like the world starts at day one. It doesn't. It starts at day zero. So somebody joins your chamber. As soon as they're added to your chamber's email list, they get a welcome email from the CEO with uh, a picture of the CEO with some very nice words about join. You know, thank you for joining. You've made a smart investment. You know, buyer's remorse and things of that nature. Uh, you're 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 really not selling anything here. You're just sincerely welcoming a new person into your family, into your chamber, into your association, into your tribe, and it comes directly from the CEO. And again, this is all pre-programmed, all set up, so you don't have to keep a spreadsheet. You don't have to try to figure out like who, who's new today, who's, who's, who's been around for three days. It, this is all set up. Once you get it set up, it just works automatically. This email, this zero day email that goes out will probably have an open rate twice as high as anything you ever send through broadcast to all your members. Because they just wrote a check or they just paid online. They're excited. They want to get value. They joined for a reason. They're, they're ready to go. And when they get this zero day email, this first welcome email, they're going to open that thing up. And so you'll see some of the highest open rates you've ever had. And so this email should be just entirely feel good. Uh, from the CEO uh, and, and promise that, you know, it's going to feel like Christmas because I'm going to send you more value. So be watching your email inbox. Let them know that you're going to be emailing them. Uh, the next day, the system sends out another email. And this one is, is more from the board of directors uh, and the chair of the board where it shows pictures of who's on the board. You're trying to make somebody that really doesn't feel like they're part of your family yet. Like they feel like an outsider, maybe. Maybe they feel like they're pushing their way in. Like if somebody comes to your networking events, a lot of times uh, they're looking around, they don't know anybody, they feel insecure, and they're kind of like, boy, I, boy I'm, I'm not really sure this is where I belong. I feel like an outsider. Everybody knows everybody except me. Well, you got to overcome that. And you do that through this welcome email series. So the second one, again, from the chair of the board with pictures of the board members, reinforces their decision to, to join uh, tells them how happy you are to have them in your in your family, uh, but no hint of selling or anything like that. It's strictly you're onboarding them. You're trying to bring them into the fold, and promise more value, uh, because you know in the P.S. down at the bottom after you sign it and all this kind of stuff. Uh, P.S. Watch for the the next email. It's going to have some more value for you. You know, it's a, it's called a Seinfeld sequence. It's like a soap opera that where it pulls you forward from episode to episode to episode uh, because you use that P.S. in there to promise more value or tell them watch watch your email inbox because something else is coming to you in a couple of days. Uh, so on day three, send them another thing of value, uh, the calendar of events or an invitation to an attend an event. Uh, the key is you're trying to get them to take action, to use your services. To, to, the worst thing in the world would be they join your organization and they don't do anything for months and months and months, and then they get an invoice to pay dues again. That's a killer. What you want them to be is they've already they've taken steps forward. They are they're using the service, just like a software company. If you can get them using the software, they'll stay maybe forever. But if they don't use the software, they're out. It's the same with your membership organization. You got to get them using it. So send them the, an invite to attend something or to take a phone call or just something. Get them to engage with the organization. Always include a call to action on these. Uh, day seven, 
uh, send them their username and their password uh, to update the directory. And you know, a lot of a lot of organizations they'll send all of this in one email. And it's just overwhelming, it's flooding. And people will like look at it super long and then they'll go, oh, I'll read this later, but they don't. You know, they, it just gets put into a box. Uh, so what you're doing is you're breaking up something that would be, you could do in one, but it wouldn't work. But if you break it into, into steps, then it's not so overwhelming. So about day seven, they're a week in, get them to fill out their, um, their profile directory. They're taking action. They're, they're binding themselves to your organization. Day nine, uh, a reminder of the benefits that are open to them because it's overwhelming when you first join. It's kind of like, I know I'm going to want this thing, um, but you guys do so much more than that. So it, it, at some point in the email sequence, about a week or two in, they need to see that, boy, there's a lot of different value I can get from this organization. I'm really glad I joined. Uh, and then day 14. Maybe you, uh, now you're just looking for engagement. You're looking for uh, to where they're not just reading your emails, uh, they're actually hitting reply to answer a question. And so it can be, you know, dear John or dear Sue, because you'll have that information. All the systems allow you to plug in personalized information. Uh, dear Sue, I'm, I'm really kind of curious about your thoughts on, you know, what this Christmas will hold. Uh, just hit reply and let me know. Or are you in favor of the bypass, the the highway bypass going around town. I, I'm, I just, I'm just curious. So many people will answer that. They're, they're brand new to the organization. They've written a check or paid online. They're excited. They want to get involved. Uh, and here's an opportunity for them to actually engage with a real human being. All these emails should come from a human being, not admin at chamber or admin uh, or, or president at association. It's, it's Tom at association, right? It's from a real human being, human to human interaction. Relationships are always between people, never between organizations. So you will find that your email marketing is much more effective if all of these, and actually all of your email sends come from a real human being. But here you're gonna ask a question, they'll hit reply and say, thank you so much for asking. They, it, for a lot of people, they don't realize these are all set up. Um, and they're not real boilerplate either. It isn't dear member, it's their name, you know? So, and it's like Frank here, I uh, just wanted to ask you a quick question and they'll hit reply and they'll answer, even though this thing was totally automated, you'll open your email inbox and go, well, the new member just emailed me and now we're starting a conversation, a little discussion. Now you got them onboarded. Now they feel as if they're not a stranger. They're, they're becoming part of the association, part of the chamber. And this continues. You just set the system up where it's at 30 days, they get another one. You know, it's not as in the very beginning, it's a lot, but they just pay. They want a lot. They, they, they want the value. They join for a reason. So at the beginning, you can really send it pretty darn often. And yeah, you'll get an unsubscribe or two. And that's the nature of the beast. It's more important that the people that you do get as members feel onboarded. So, and then it, it kind of like lets off a little bit, 30, 60, 90, 120, every couple months towards the end. Uh, and this becomes your retention sequence. Uh, because again, you do not want them to feel like I've been a member all this time and I meant to attend this event or I meant to do this and I haven't taken advantage of it. And you know, it comes up on the one year anniversary and they get a bill for you, they're out. Instead, they've been reading your emails every month, every couple months. They've been answering your questions. They've been uh, following up to update the website uh, so that they're getting that link back from your organization to their, to their website. They know they're getting value. And it all happens automatically once you get it set up. Now, I want to tell you that you're going to find that some people don't open these emails. Like most, most people will. They just paid money. They're getting the email. They, people spend money for a reason. They're just not going to give you money out of the kindness of their heart. They join because they want value. So most people will open these. But some people won't. Maybe you have a bad email address or, you know, it could be a hundred different things. To, they're, they've quit opening the sequence. Well, that's, you can look at your numbers and you say, all right, this person that hasn't opened the last three emails, uh, let's have an ambassador reach out to them. Our, our retention person needs to concentrate on these people because these are, this is the low hanging fruit for uh, retention. They're not, they're not opening the emails. They're not filling out their membership profile. So that all, uh, hopefully all that makes sense for you. It, it can feel totally overwhelming. 
And I know it takes a while to set in. And so don't think that you're just gonna one day sit down and have this all done. It's gonna take work, it's, I, I promise you that. But once it's done, you get all that time back, plus your retention rate goes up. Um, let's talk about prospects, leads. There's lots of people that probably should be a member of your chamber or your association. Yeah, for whatever reason, they're not. You need to proactively get those people to join. And the way you do this is through the email marketing automation. Now it starts with a item of value. This, this graphic here shows that uh, we created, this is something we've done, this is a lead magnet. And by the way, this is all about getting their contact information and permission to market to them. You can't just do what I'm showing you here to total strangers. You need to do it in such a way that it doesn't violate the spam laws. Uh, it's not totally you know, offensive. You're not just spamming strangers. They have to opt in for this, all right? And the way you get them to opt in is through a lead magnet. And a lead magnet is a thing of value, such as a report or a guide, a cheat sheet. Uh, this is a report we put together for the chamber industry, 20 pages long, give or take, really high quality information, good graphics, very handy, and I could have sold it. But instead, we offer it up for free to our target market and say, hey, here's something that I think you'll value, that you'll, you'll get value from. All I need from you is your email address, and there'll be a little script there about permission to market to them. And they give you the email address, their name and their email address, they hit send, they get the lead magnet. Now all of a sudden, I have a lead for my marketing automation, my email marketing automation to kick in. So this is how it works. Chances are the person that's downloading this lead magnet is pretty much a stranger to your organization. They may have heard of it, uh, they may not have. I know in the chamber industry, there's tons of people that should be a member that don't even, they've never even heard of the chamber or they think it's part of the government or for what, what thing. And I'm sure it's the same in the association world. There's people that are in the industry that don't even know your association works. Well, you gotta welcome these people into your world. They've gotta have uh, this uh, onboarding series. They're, they're not members, they're just prospects, but you still gotta welcome into your world. So this is called a welcome series. They download the lead magnet. The first thing that happens immediately, day zero, is they get the lead magnet that you got to fulfill on this promise. And the system automatically sends this, right? And so they go, oh, the, the prospect, they typed in their email address and they hit send. And they're thinking, am I really going to get this? this? You know, are they going to send it to me? They check their email and there it is. Credibility. And immediate credibility. And then they open it and they look at it and go, oh, this is good quality. This, this, this looks like a valuable thing. I am so glad that I did this. And then, but still, the, you know, they're not in love with you. They're just, you know, they got something of value from you. You came through on a promise. That's not enough. On day one, so the next day, they need to get an email from you through the marketing automation system that basically says, just checking in to make sure that you receive the freebie, whatever it happened to be. And I wanted to share with you a little bit of a story on how we serve the industry or the community or whoever your prospect target market is and share a story, kind of like your backstory. What does your organization do for people? How do you help? How do you serve? Uh, if you've gone through the Simon Sinek uh, of your why, what's your why? Why does your organization exist? Tell it in a story so that you know it's not a marketing pitch at all. There's no hint of salesmanship in this. This is all about just introducing your organization to a prospect. Uh, and then, you know, so it's your story and what you do for them, uh, share your why, and then promise more value. Again, in the PS area, tell them like it's it's gonna feel like Christmas around here because I have more for you. Let them know that you're gonna email them again. And then on day three deliver more value, give them a tip, send them a calendar, send them another cheat sheet. A lot of these things can be based upon what they downloaded, what the lead magnet was. Again, if they downloaded a lead magnet on networking events or how to be a good networker, well, sending them the calendar to your local networking events, they would love that. It's another gift. You're building reciprocity, you're building likability, you're building authority. And so all of these things, all these triggers are building up 
in the welcome series to where you're taking somebody that was a stranger to your organization. They, they couldn't care less. You were out of my, out of sight, out of mind, except for they saw on social media, social media posts that you created this freebie. They go, Oh, I could use this. They give you their contact information. Then they get this onboarding series and pretty soon they got kind of warm fuzzies for your organization. Uh, day five, usually these are a, it's three emails after they get the lead magnet. So it's a four email series. The last one is deliver more value or tell an interesting story. So they're, they're really kind of feeling like, I, I really like this organization. They, they're serving me. They want to see me successful. They're sending me free value, free content. It's all really good. And uh, so what you've done is you've taken a stranger, somebody that barely knew your organization, and now they know, like, and trust your organization. Or I think of it another way is the, they were cold traffic, you know, cold calling. You know about cold calling. You just call a stranger out of the blue and you try to sell them something incredibly hard to do. Right. But then there's warm and hot traffic to where you call those people and you can get a sale pretty easy. And if you think about your own membership, I bet right now you could pick up a phone and call a longtime member. You maybe think of your best members and you could raise a thousand dollars right now. If you had to, even, even, even if you couldn't share what you need the thousand bucks for, you could probably raise a thousand bucks from a, a member or a few members in just a few minutes because you'd be calling warm and hot traffic. If you tried to raise a thousand bucks from absolute strangers, cold traffic, you'd, you'd spend all day and not make the thousand dollars. But you could do it in a couple phone calls when somebody becomes warm or hot traffic. And that's what their conversion, the, the welcome series does. It takes somebody from being a stranger to know, like, and trust. And now they're warm or even hot traffic. And now you can sell them. So that's when the conversion series uh, steps in. Now, this is going to sound a bit overwhelming. And I always get pushback on this. But I've been doing this a long time. And I got to tell you, this works. Concurrently with that welcome series, you're going to be sending out a conversion series. And I know you're at, at this point, you're got to be thinking that, wow, that's a lot of emails. They'll just unsubscribe. And you know what? Some people will definitely unsubscribe. And those probably people probably were not going to be members because you weren't speaking directly to their needs, their wants, their heart. Uh, you know, if you're trying to sell everybody under the sun and you worry about an unsubscribe here or there, then you're just not going to be able to do this because in the world we live in, people unsubscribe but you just got to let it go. When somebody's a good prospect to where you really can serve them, you can really help them, they're not going to unsubscribe. They're going to look forward to your emails because you're helping them because they're getting value, right? Okay, so don't worry too much that if you get an unsubscribe because somebody, you know, or even if they message you back and you're emailing me too much, you know, take it in, you know, maybe you can like lessen up a little bit, you know, if you're getting a lot of those, maybe that's good data. But if you're if you're getting an email every now and again saying, hey, you're 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 emailing me too often, then that's probably just about right. You know, they say in, in marketing that you have to be aggressive enough that, you know, it's a little bit too much for some people. But that doesn't mean it's too much for the people that you're meant to serve that need you. It's just right for them. All right. So let's talk about this conversion series. What are you getting in conversion series? So this is four days after they've downloaded the lead magnet. So day four, they get an email that's called the gain email. And the idea is here, what would they gain if they join your organization? You know, what do they gain by joining? And you got to think about this. What, you know, what is the, what do you get when, when you join our organization? Well, in, in chambers and associations, you, your status increases, you know, you're, you're somebody in your community when you're a member versus not a member. It's a, it's a status kind of thing. So if they are, if they're a person that cares about status and a lot of entrepreneurs care about status, a lot of people in certain industries care a lot about status in your copywriting, in your salesmanship and print, what you're tackling here is how they'll gain status by becoming a member. You want to invite them in to be a member. You know, that's, it's good for their, uh, their position in the community. So talk status. Uh, maybe, maybe it's different though for what you're doing. Maybe they want to gain awareness for their business. If your lead magnet was about how to market your business locally or how to market your business to your industry, then talk about in your, in the 
conversion series, talk about that. Because it's all automated and all marketed, you can set up different conversion series depending on what the lead magnet was. And you should do that because you're trying to persuade people without ever talking to them. Salesmanship in print. So talk about you know, how they'll gain just by joining, they're gonna gain a ton of awareness for their business. Or maybe they'll gain credibility. If you're in the chamber industry, you, you probably know about the Shapiro study. And what that study said was, I think the number is 68% of people view a chamber member as more credible than a non-chamber member. And so use this uh, study. You can even you know, take images from the study and use that as you will gain. By being a member of the chamber, I want to invite you to be a member of the chamber or the association. You will gain uh, credibility. People will trust your business more because you're a chamber member. And so you're trying to close on this gain. What will they gain? Uh, maybe they want to gain the ability to impact the community. Maybe they want to gain the ability to post jobs. A lot of it goes back to what was the lead magnet? What was their motivation for coming in as a lead? And then use that as a hot button to close them on what they will get if they become a member. So that goes out on day four. Now, if they don't join, if they don't immediately go, I'm in, then they get the next one. This is on day six. It's called the logic email. Not everybody is motivated by gain. Some people are more logic motivated. Think of Spock. What would Spock be motivated by? Uh, an argument could be, you know what? At only 20 bucks a month, this is about the least you could spend to get so much value. That makes sense. That's logical. It's only 20 bucks a month and they get A, B, C, D, and E, and F. I, I, it's just smart business for me to join. That makes sense. Another one would be, you know, dues are only 200 bucks an entire year, but you'll immediately get back $800 in marketing value. Uh, it, it just, it makes good business sense, you know, and then a call to action to join your organization. Uh, it could be, if you, if you want to impact the community, the most logical option is to do it through the established business community. You know, why reinvent the wheel? Why throw spaghetti at the wall? Join our organization because we're already impacting the industry or our community. It just makes logical sense. You know, so use words like that. You know, if somebody's got more of an engineer mind or they're more of a, a numbers person, this is the email that will convince them. Not everybody will go for the game. Not everybody will go for the, uh, the logic email. So it's always in a series. The third one is the fear one. Everybody responds to the fear one. You're gonna get most of your conversions through the fear email, the scarcity one. People do not, people, they, um, they procrastinate. People, they, they don't act now if they don't have to. Uh, they won't pull out their wallet if they can do the same thing tomorrow and get the same deal. You know, so you got to think in terms of what will motivate somebody, and this is the vast majority of people that are procrastinators, that are, you know, they, they have to have a deadline. They, they work under pressure. Uh, so they would get something like this. The subject line of this email would be something like, you won't hear from us again on this. Ah, oh, I don't want to miss it. What is it? You know, they might not even open those first two, but they're opening this email because they don't want to miss out. And uh, you don't want to hit them over the head. You don't want to totally offend anybody, but you want to be pretty, you know, you what you do is valuable. You work very hard for people and you're inviting these people into your membership. You don't want to come across as begging or a donation, it's not a charity, it's an investment. And, uh, and they would just be foolish to, to miss out. And so you won't hear from us again on this. You're gonna get a very high open rate on something like that. You know, and you could do last chance, final offer, things like that will work too. Uh, and then the copy can be things like this. We're, we're sorry, but the offer ends tonight at midnight. Uh, if you don't act now, you, we can't include you in the printed directory. I remember when I was running my Chamber of Commerce, the annual directory would come up and we'd be to the last maybe two to three weeks of editing and final count, you know, where it was getting down to the wire. And I would get a flood of people that would, would join because my marketing was about, hey, I want to include you in the directory, but the deadline's Friday. If you're not in by Friday, I can't include you. And they would flood in. Scarcity, um, procrastination. So I, another one might be, you know, just a friendly note to let you know that the, the special for this month is ending. So you won't get the bonuses, you know, join now. People hate that when, you know, I, I don't like it when organizations discount their membership very much. I think that sends the wrong message. 
but adding bonuses if they join now and then threatening to pull those bonuses if they don't act now, that is very motivating and that works. Uh, this is your last chance to register and get to attend the fall orientation. You know, it doesn't even have to be all that big of a deal. It, it just has to be something that makes them go, all right, I'm, I know I'm going to join. I don't want to miss out on this thing. Uh, give me my wallet because, uh, you know, I might as well join now because I don't want the fear of missing out. You know, very persuasive. You'll get most of your new members that close through your marketing automation on that third email. Now, I want to cover some things here that, um, that you might be thinking about. What if they join from email number two? Do they get email number three? No, no. They, the systems are smart enough to go, all right, they are now on the new member list, so they don't get any more of these conversion emails. They're, they're now going to be welcomed. They're going to be onboarded. They're on the new list. So it used to be really complicated and hard to build these logic trees and make sure that people didn't get an email that they'd already purchased something and these try to sell it again and that makes you look unprofessional. Nowadays, it's just lickety split. If they join on email two, they're not gonna get email number three. Uh, what if they don't join? You know, Not everybody's gonna join from these things. So what happens to them? Well, they go on your nurture list. You, you don't just drop them as if they're dead. You just put them on your monthly e-newsletter list or in some kind of way, keep the relationship alive, keep delivering value, keep trying to build a human to human relationship, nurture them until your next lead magnet comes out. A couple months down the road, and I, I, just, I recommend every two to three months, uh, create a new lead magnet. You, you can't do these things weekly, you, it, it'll overwhelm you. Just do them every couple months. You're creating a new, e a new lead magnet and if this person downloads the new lead magnet, they start getting the conversion series. They don't get the welcome series because they've already been welcomed. That would feel kind of weird, but they're, they're already on the, the uh, nurture list. So they'll get the conversion series. And you will find that a lot of people that didn't buy that first time, they just didn't know, know you well enough. They didn't trust you enough. Maybe the timing was bad, but come the next time, now it's time, their life, is different or they have more money or for whatever reason. Uh, I've got people, I have 18 or 19 lead magnets going at all times right now that I've built up over years. It took a long time to get there, but every day somebody downloads one of my lead magnets and I'll go and look and there'll be people that have downloaded 12, 15, 18 of my lead magnets over the years. And they're just now finally, that was the one that made them, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna join Frank's membership. And so you'll find the same thing. If you can get people that have downloaded five, six, seven of these over time, those people are so likely to join your organization. They're so deep into the funnel where they know, like, and trust you. It's just going to take the right timing, the right message. And boom, you'll open your email inbox in the morning and there they'll be. And, um, and those people stay as members too, because they've downloaded value over time. Um, so I already covered this, so where they're not going to get the welcome series if they're already on your nurture list. Um, and the end result is what you're trying to do here is take people that are basically strangers before they download the lead magnet uh, to become friends, to where they know, like, and trust, to become members. And it's all done automatically through email marketing automation. So I just want to close here with some stats. Uh, one company that offers these landing pages where your lead magnet would be on, where you collect the email address and this sort of stuff, it's called Optin Monster. There's tons of companies that do this for free. I happen to use ClickFunnels if you want to look them up. They're not free, but it does all of this kind of stuff. You could do it through uh, Gross Zone. You could do it through um, MailChimp has it built in now. Uh, where you can create these landing pages, the sales pages, where people can opt in to get your lead magnet. The, their data shows that 80% of companies use uh, email marketing software of some sort, and 51% of them is doing the marketing automation. When you're doing these kind of emails, 119% higher click-through rate over your blast emails. So you'll find that these things, you know, if you're sitting on 30, 35% open rate, that's great. That's wonderful. But you'll get 50, 60, 70% open rate on these conversion and welcome emails and the onboarding emails. Uh, you'll make more revenue by doing this over e-blasts. So that's what the 13% is. 
uh, if, if you're just blasting people out an offer, uh, it's way more effective to do them automatically. And then uh, the conversion rates, 60% uh, automated offers boost conversion, 60% over non-timed emails with the same offer. And a lot of that is just you're too scattered and, and things are going on and just one email out of the blue and move on to their next thing just doesn't convert very well. It's the series that's the secret sauce. All right, why don't we go to the Q&A. Amy, are you there to uh, feed me some questions? I am here and we have so many awesome questions. Um, I don't know. I know that a lot of people have a hard stop at well, whatever your time zone is at the top of the hour. Frank, are you on a hard stop or do you have like a few minutes if we go over? I'm not, I can stay. Okay, so we're gonna start answering some questions and we may go five minutes over um, if we get on a roll here. Um, but a couple of things I wanted to answer just for everybody is that yes, this is being recorded and the slide deck is also available. You're gonna receive a link to those using the, um, it will come to you via email in the next 24 hours, and it will take you to a page on our website where everything is accessible. So even if you don't, if you miss the email, you can go to our website, growthzone.com, and you will find the information there. So it is being recorded. Um, then additionally, let's see here. There are a lot of things that Frank mentioned, uh, too many to even go over. And I know for a fact that he has an incredible website that has access, I'm guessing, something about all of those resources he talked about. But I uh, would also have to say that we have an incredible website too. And so if you're looking for a general overview on say marketing automation, we have a brand new guide on our knowledge library that you may find very helpful, or you will find it helpful. And then also some information on the sales funnel, which ties into marketing automation. So that's just a technique you can use um, that complements that process. So um, Frank Group is, if you just type in Chamber Professionals on Facebook, you will be able to access that. And if you have random questions for the group, say if you know they have letter samples or what have they used that works, um, that group is a gold mine. So, um, and then if you have questions specifically about the growth zone and chamber master and how those products work with marketing automation and whether your current customer considering it, please reach out because we have a great support team that can walk you through that. All right, so the question, where to begin? And just knowing that we have a lot of them, Frank, proceed quickly if you think you can. Um, what, do you, what do you consider a good retention rate? Uh, in the chamber world, 90%. Um, association world might be a little bit lower, but and it, it, it depends on how fast you're growing. Like if your chamber or your association is growing like a rocket, your retention rate is going to be a little less. But if you're steady and you've been around for a while and uh, you're any lower than 90%, I, I would look into those numbers and find out why. Awesome. And I think I know the answer to this, but could you use marketing? Do you think an association or a chamber could use marketing automation to prospect for sponsors? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Same, same kind of idea, salesmanship in print and uh, give value first, give, 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 and then ask. Um, and yeah, no problem. Yeah, I like that. Do you think that, or what would you say as far as, is there a difference in the sequence, whether it's the frequency or the type of things that you're doing for renewals versus onboarding or prospecting? Yeah, so uh, let's talk onboarding. Uh, they just wrote you a, a check, they're excited just like you're dating a new person, you wanna see them every moment of the day as much as possible. So uh, be kind of aggressive. Those first three weeks, something like that, every few days they're getting value from you. Uh, but that needs to kind of peter off like a couple that's been married for 10 years. You can go a month or two without even talking and it's fine. Um, we'll have a whole nother webinar on that. <laughs> <laughs> 
if you want to, you can reach out to Frank for more advice on that. I'm just, I'm just teasing, but you know, as <laughs> you know, you wouldn't do that 365 days a year. You, right. but but it's heavy at the beginning because you're onboarding them, you're you're bringing them into your world. Uh, but eventually, it's every 30 days and then every 60 days. Uh, but you don't want to go any longer than that because pretty soon the renewal's up, and you want them to feel like they've gotten recent reach outs. Perfect. There are, um, and these are questions that are, I guess, tough to answer, but we'd like you to weigh in on. What do you do with the, you know, you have a fear of email fatigue or people reporting you as junk and, um, you know, or maybe you're getting reported as, you know, considered spam. You'll, what would you suggest? What, what's your advice on that? Don't be terrible, terribly fearful of being marked as spam. I mean, you're a, you're a nonprofit organization. You're delivering value. They've signed up for these things. The, you didn't scrape somebody's website or grab a fishbowl full of business cards. I mean, they, they proactively you know, signed in. You could even have them double opt in if you really are you know, wanting to make sure that they're uh, being explicit about being a subscriber. Very, very few people are gonna mark you as spam. Now, you do want to have the unsubscribe button, which is part of the law. You, you're, if you're doing any of these kind of things, you need an unsubscribe button. And you, you don't want to bury that, you know, make it make it prevalent and tell them, like, I'll be sad if you unsubscribe, but I totally understand, you know, just unsubscribe. If you ever need anything in the future, you know, resubscribe. Um, you're going to get very, very little pushback uh, by people that, you know, that really um, should be members or are, are members. Uh, a lot of the systems also allow people to if they hit the um, the unsubscribe button, it's going to ask them, do you want to unsubscribe from the newsletter, from the welcome series, from this, from that? Um, I, I know my system is set up that way. And some people will, they very rarely unsubscribe from the VIP list, but they'll unsubscribe from the others. And that's fine. Oh, more and more questions are coming in. Okay. All right. So, which is good. And if you have the answer to this, um, I would really like to know, I'm, how can you get, um, if you don't have somebody, how do you work with the lead magnet without an email address? Oh, you can't. No, this is all about email marketing automation. I mean, if, um, if somebody comes into your office and you want to print one out and hand it to them, fine, just to be nice but it's all about collecting that email. The, the gold standard in doing digital marketing, the core asset of people doing modern digital marketing is collecting that email address and permission to email people. That email list is money in the bank. It is a, an asset like no other. That's what I thought, but I thought maybe you had a a secret recipe. <laughs> um, let's see here. So more of the questions. And I think you covered this a little bit, but I'm going to put it back out there. Do you have concerns or how do you avoid being too impersonal? Talk to one person. This is something that uh, Norma and I learned. Like when, when we're doing writing an email, writing sales copy, shooting a video, we, we think of one person and we write it to her. And uh, it just makes it as if you're sitting on the other side of a table with somebody. Have fun with it. No big blocks of text. People don't read big blocks of text. It's one or two lines, lots of white spaces. It should look like a mountaintop. Just copywriting strategies here. If you've never read a copywriting book, write, read Robert Bly, amazing copywriter. Uh, there, there's formulas for all, all of this that people have figured out over the last hundred years. How do you write persuasive copy? And uh, it, 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 this will take a little bit of work. You know, you're, you're going to have to read a book, read some websites, read some blog posts. All of this has been written about how to do it for years and years and years and years. Uh, don't, don't just sit down with your own knowledge and pen out a big block of text 
and hope for the best. You got to be strategic on this stuff. Agreed. And we have some great blog posts on our website that, uh, and a, and a um, guide in our knowledge library that's called, well, I don't remember off the top of my head what it's called, but it's fantastic. Great. <laughs> um, there's some questions that have kept coming in and I really liked this one. Um, and I'm gonna paraphrase it a touch. Should you or should you not be sending, and I guess this is assuming people haven't opted out, should you or should you not be sending event or other information to dropped members or what kind of information can or should you send to them or should you give up? Yeah, so your most likely future member will be a past member. So if you just think that people that are no longer members are dead to you, you're, that's your lowest hanging fruit for somebody that will join again in the, in the future. Because they could be mad at a staff person, they could be mad at a board member, they might have run into cash flow issues, could have been just some misunderstanding. Keep in touch with those people. Uh, I, you know, because you're so busy, I would at least just leave them on your regular monthly e-news that you send to, uh, you know, your big list of prospects, at least keep them on there. Uh, if, if you don't want to invite them to things because they're no longer a member or you don't have time to customize that with a member, non-member price. And, you know, I understand that you can't be all things to all people. There's just not enough time in the day. At least keep them on your e-news um, so that you stay the, your top of mind with them for when they're ready to join again. Awesome. So I misrepresented the lead magnet question, um, but I do still wish that you had an answer for that. But it was more so asking for ideas or of um, venues, you know, maybe it's or platforms to promote the lead magnet. So is it on your website? Is it, you know, what, is it at a show? Well, shows are hard right now, but yeah. for so, getting the lead magnet, where, where would you, where can you use it? Yeah. So the, the, the prime area is social media. Uh, you post it to your, your association or chambers page, and then you spend a few dollars of your ad budget to promote that to people in your target market and you reach people that you know, should be members, reach people in certain zip codes, reach people with certain interests that your chamber or your association serves. You know, that's the first thing I would do. If I only had one place that I could post it, it would be on the Facebook page, and then I'd pay to reach the people that would value it, would get value from it. But you know, I'm also on LinkedIn, so it goes to LinkedIn. I'm also on Twitter, so it goes to Twitter. I'm also on Instagram, so it goes to Instagram. I have a website that gets pretty good traffic sent to it from Google and Bing and the other places, so it goes on my website. You, you even share it with your current members because like a member that's current might go, hey, this is interesting. They download that. It's okay if, um, if current members are getting your, your value out of the lead magnets. They won't get the welcome series and they won't get a conversion series because they're already members, uh, but you just delivered more value to a current member. That's a great answer. And then the question, um, evidently I'm reading, I need to read better, but um, about renewals is not so much using um, whether you should, well, anyway, what kind of messaging sequ sequence should you use for people who just renewed? Yeah, so you wanna keep- Which is great, people. that's good. That's a good thing to do yeah, for sure. But, yeah, but it's not a welcome sequence. It's not an onboarding sequence. It's a nurturing sequence. So you just keep them on that every 30 days, every 60 days uh, so that you know the organization stays top of mind. You're, you're not asking for anything. Um, you're not pitching. You're just delivering more value. And the idea is that if you can get somebody to be a member for three years, they're almost certainly going to stay a member until they go out of business, you know, basically. Uh, you got to get them through that three years. So that retention sequence, uh, if you can find the time to sit down and write it out for 36 months, do it. 
As far as uh, tiered memberships or people with different membership levels, different membership types, maybe it's corporate, maybe it's individual members. Um, do you, set, do you recommend setting up separate sequences for those? Well, it de yeah, it, it depends. You're, it's more complicated when you have tier dues. Um, it mostly depends on the lead magnet. That's where it all starts is this is the target market that we're creating a lead magnet for. That when, when people download that, you know what they're interested in. So they'll get a welcome and conversion series uh, based around that lead magnet. Uh, rather than just one button that says, you know, join the organization, join the chamber, join the association, and just takes them to your sales page, you might want to have that button be more of, you know, explore the, the different tiers or contact our salesperson to learn the options. You know, I, a lot of chambers and a lot of associations now don't send people to a sales page to actually complete the sale because the sale's too complicated and people default to the cheapest thing. And so if you're in that situation to where you're, you're not wanting to have the actual sale take place on the sales page, but you just want to generate a very hot lead for your salesperson, that's fine too. Um, so it really depends on you know, what your philosophy is. I kind of like coming in in the morning and seeing you've got money. But if you've got a superstar salespeople person, superstar salesperson, or sales, get you know, and you know that they'll close eighty percent of people they talk to, just get them the hot leads. Agreed. Suggestions for people who, what my parents called looky loos, people who are just kind of poking around and are curious, um, you put them on a list, you know, people that aren't prospects. Yeah, no, I, I hear that. So, so if somebody joins your email list, if somebody downloads the lead magnet, they're on your email list and they're getting your content, that doesn't cost you even a penny extra. Uh, maybe if you get, you know, jump from 5,000 to to the next level of your email service, you might start, you know, the fee might start going up a bit. But in general, the marginal additional cost of emailing another person, even if they're a really weak prospect is zero. It's, there is no additional cost. So I wouldn't fret too much if a looky-loo wants the freebie, because there are people that will download your freebie just to see what it is, and they'll never become a member. And that's okay. Now, if somebody downloads your lead magnet and they go on your list and they, and they don't open your emails for 180 days, 360 days, those people get deleted. And that is just good email list cleaning. You know, if, if the email program, the, the companies that decide what is spam and what's not spam, and if we're gonna deliver the emails and things of that nature, they're constantly looking at open rates, click-through rates, responses, things of that nature. And so if your email list is full of people that haven't opened anything in the last year, that's actually hurting you a lot. So you want to do your list maintenance at least once a year and kind of purge out anybody that isn't at least opening your emails. Agreed. And that ties back into a little bit talking about how to avoid ending up in junk mail and getting people to open is that list maintenance. It's not the most fun project, but definitely worthwhile. And one person just weighed in on the answer Frank was just giving us is that even if the person's not a prospect, that they may be helping tell your story to their friends, that word of mouth marketing. So just if you're doing email marketing, it may not stop there. It might snowball into word of mouth marketing. So there is value. Um, we are kind of getting, I don't want to go too far over. Um, so let's see here. There was another one that I wanted to try to get to. Okay. Well, I'm just going to, um, oh, what type of things would you include in 30, 60, 90 day emails? I would ask questions. Um, let's assume that's for prospects. 
Well, prospects don't get the 30, 60, 90s because uh, they got a three email conversion series and then they go on your nurture list to be part of your newsletter, okay? So, so they have to join within that, those first three emails and that third email, the scarcity email makes that plain as day is you're not gonna ask again, okay? So you need that. Otherwise, they'll just, they'll just never join. So be really firm on that. Uh, when you're onboarding somebody and they do get your 30, 60, 90, 120 day emails, I think the very best strategy you can do is ask a question because people love to be asked a question. And when they hit reply and respond with an answer to your question, that's going to tell the email services that the emails that the chamber is sending or the association is sending out, they're not spam. People are answering them. That's a discussion. That's a dialogue. And so that ups your reputation score. Uh, you can provide additional value, updates on what you're working on, things of that nature. But I almost always lead a, uh, an email uh, with a question because I need responses as a signal to deliver my future emails. That's a good answer. All right, so a couple of more things. Um, first of all, thank you, Frank. We are, again, so pleased and thrilled that you were able to join us. And um, everyone will receive a follow-up email next 24 hours to the email address that you used to register. Um, a couple of reminders just to help you all out. Remember, daylight savings time ends this weekend. Um, I was informed of that and reminded of that. And then um, my 15-year-old let me know that it's also a full moon and Halloween and that's calendar hot trick, hat trick. So uh, remember to set your clocks back. To learn more about GrowZone software offerings, head to growzone.com and have an online chat with our team. No pressure, sign up for a group or a one-on-one -on -one demo. If you have any specific questions about this webinar, reach out at marketing at growzone.com. And thank you to everyone for taking the time to join us. You are busy and we appreciate you making room for us in your schedule. And um, I think that's about it. Frank, you have anything? No, I just want to thank everybody for being here. I appreciate it. I'll see you in the Facebook group. Uh, let me know if you watched it and if you got value. And if you have questions, I'll be answering them in there. And Amy, you can send me questions. Um, I'll answer them. And okay. I have a flood. Take yeah. care, everybody. We have a lot. All right, everyone stay safe. Bye-bye.